Okay, welcome everyone to today's coffee lecture powered by ETH Library, which is the first of this autumn series. My name is Julian de Derke, and I work as a consultant for research analytics and research data management at the ETH Library. And in today's coffee lecture, I will focus on the topic impact factors in research, what they can do for you and what they can't do for you. For those of you who are interested and who joined us today, you can find the slides at this temporary link I posted in the chat. And otherwise, the slide deck will also be made available at the Coffee Lecture website you see in the bottom here. So let's get started. Today, I would like to give you an overview about different measures for the impact of research. And the goal is that you gain a critical understanding for how not to look at such measures or how to do so. First, let's get started with the term research impact. And of course, when we talk about research impact, there's always two sides of it. On the one hand side, it's scientific considerations of what we understand as research impact. And on the other hand, uh, we can also have like a colloquial understanding of research impact. And when I asked ChatGPT to give me kind of a summary what research impact is all about, I found that this was a nice summary. So that is why I decided to also bring it into this coffee lecture. So ChatGPT basically answered that research impact refers to the significant effects or contributions that scientific research has on various aspects of society beyond just academic influence. It reflects the reach, influence, and transformative power of research findings on practical, societal, economic, cultural, or environmental dimensions. Essentially, research impact measures how research outputs lead to changes in policy, practice, public behavior, or broader understanding. So as we can see already, research impact is pretty multidimensional and multifaceted, and it can also be operationalized in various ways. I'll mention throughout the uh, coffee lecture a couple of references to literature for those of you uh, who are interested to read up on it and just also to underline the arguments I bring in here. So research impact is quite, quite multifaceted. And the first takeaway message I would like to take from this already is there's no one simple way to define and measure impact. Impact factors are mostly used in research assessment, performance monitoring, also in studies on the science of science, and when using bibliometric or scientific, uh, scientometric indicators to measure research output of research units. And examples for this could be that there are diverse indicators of how a particular paper is perceived as compared to other papers from the same scientific field. So this is kind of an overview about the firm and we need to take into account that there's many facets to it and there's not one simple way to define and measure impact. Of course, now we are in the context of ETH Zurich as a large research institution and regarding impact in this context of research assessment, this lecture builds mainly on three reference points. The first two build on the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment from 2013 that has been signed by ETH Zurich and also by the Swiss National Science Foundation. And this is suggesting a reform of the research assessment and evaluation process in higher education and, uh, and research institutions. And because ETH Zurich signed this and committed to it, it is such an important reference point. And you can also find the link to ETH Zurich's website and the summary on research assessment there. So let's have a look on different types of impact factors that can help to operationalize research impact. First and well known is journal impact. Journal impact factors are basically the annual average number of citations to papers in any given journal in the two preceding years. This is a fairly well-known um, uh, impact factor or indicator, but it's also, also often misinterpreted. And we'll have a more closer look at this later on. Another type of <clears throat> impact factor are citation impact factors. This, these basically refer to the number of citations, which means it's the number of times that a publication appears in the reference sections of other publications. 
Very well known is also the H index introduced by Hirsch in 2005, which basically is calculated as a researcher's n number of papers that are cited equal or more than n times. Um, unfortunately, while it is wi widely used, this is often very hard to interpret and it can have various problems. And I'll focus on that later on. Another example could be the mean number of citations per paper, which is a very standardized way of measuring a citation impact. And I will have a look at this later on. A third quite different type uh, or supplementary type of impact factors could be altmetrics. So um, these are basically measures that, measures that um, focus more on the use of social media or news mentions. Um, I should also say that this list is not, not ex exhaustive, of course. There are many more options to operationalize research impact. And if you want to read up on it, um, there is a paper by Bormann in 2013, for example. So let's have a bit of a closer look into journal impact. Journal impact factors are basically measures of average citation performance of papers in a certain journal. These are very prominent and well known, also because the mainly known journal impact factor is basically a product uh, by Clarivate uh, that is very much also promoted within Web of Science, and that is probably also contributing to its prominence. But this is also often mistakenly treated as a signifier of the quality of a single research paper because it basically measures the performance of the journal. Um, this is also associated with uh, various methodological shortcomings. For example, uh, the journal impact factor does not give any indication of the variation in the distribution of citations. And these are typically uh, over two to three orders of magnitude. So uh, it is uh, a measure of journal impact, but it doesn't really give us the variation in the distribution of citations, which makes it problematic from a methodological point of view. And in fact, there has been research also from quite some time ago that journal impact factors do not perform well as predictors of citation performance. So they can help us in looking backwards at how the journal performed, but we do not know how uh, an article that is published in that very journal will perform in the future. So that is why there's quite some problems related to journal impact factors. What about other popular citation indicators? Another popular citation indicator I mentioned already uh, is the H index. Um, this is basically the N papers that are cited equal or more than N times. Another example would be the mean number of citations. If we now compare two research groups with different research output, um, at first sight, we might think that research group two is more productive here because they have they produce more papers, but research group one has more influential papers because they are more cited. However, not surprisingly, the situation is more complex. So if we look basically at the Hirsch index uh, or the H index um, for the research group one, this would calculate as a three and for research group four, uh, sorry, research group two, this would calculate as a four, while for the mean number of citations, research group one is much more successful. So the question here really is, is four better than three? And is the H index really a good indicator to measure research impact? Important to keep in mind uh, to take away from this is that a number always needs to be interpreted and the H index, albeit very prominent and well known, is particularly problematic in this regard. And this has been documented by many researchers who looked at this in detail. So the takeaway point is well-known indicators might be misleading. And to illustrate this even further, we can also ask ourselves, what happens if we add even more context information for those two research groups? So for example, if we think about research group one having worked on this achie these achievements within 10 years, but research group two only took two years for those uh, seven papers, maybe we would think that research group two is actually performing better. 
However, if we look at that research group two has a member, has 10 team members, while research group one is only consisting of two persons, the equilibrium might change again. So we really always need context information to actually evaluate the impact of the research from this particular research group. So it shows that we need to make informed choices for the indicators we want to use to actually uh, measure research impact. So let's move on to citation impact, for which the H index of, is of course an example, but uh, let's focus on this in a bit more detail. Citations have the advantage that they, that they can be measured on the appropriate level of granularity. What does that mean? It means that citations can be measured on the level of an individual publication, for example, a journal, journal article. They are not measured on the level of the journal, for example. And they usually refer to the number of citations and they allow to focus on the individual research article. That's the main advantage. Um, however, they also have a time lag, often several years before the indicator is actually robust because uh, before a citation has collected, uh, before a publication has collected citations, this might take a while. And um, basically citations reflect the influence of a research article but this can also differ in important ways from what evaluators might really want to determine, quality or significance of research findings. So the influence of a research article might not be the same as the quality of significance. And also here we have some methodological challenges. Review papers might be get, uh, more cited than research articles. Um, citation impact also depends on the scientific field and without field normalization and calculating these indicators, it's not really suitable for comparing researchers across disciplines. That might, there might also be problems of self-citations self being included or citation circles within a community of researchers, and they depend on the bibliometric database we use for those. Finally, citation impact does also not reflect well to what extent subsequent research builds upon a reported discovery. So basically, does not really include the reuse of research findings. The takeaway point from this would be that comparison of fields really definitely requires normalization. Otherwise, citation impact indicators can be very problematic. The final type of impact factors are what I mentioned in the beginning, altmetrics. There are different providers for this. In the case of ETH Zurich, we have access to altmetric.com, which you can check in if you're interested. They are basically complementary to traditional and citation-based metrics, and they are collected from societal and scientific tools. What you see here is the Altmetrics Donut, which basically lists the summary of all the mentions and citations, or I should say all the mentions of a particular research article, in this case, one on the proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2 in Nature Medicine. And this was very prominent. It was what you can see in the right-hand side mentioned in 800 news outlets. It was mentioned by roughly 60,000 X users, and it was also mentioned in 112 Wikipedia pages. So as you can see, these are already different indicators that measure, measure different dimensions of impact, and they are supplementary to the traditional ones. Takeaway from this is that alt metrics can supplement traditional metrics if you are looking for this. I've mentioned many of the examples. I've listed a couple of more here, which you uh, could check later on. I would finally like to mention a few advantages. They are fast and in real time, so um, they can be measured very quickly compared to scientific citations that might take a while. So um, one collect date, can collect data about a publication as soon as it is published. Um, they are also not restricted to an academic audience, but there are also disadvantages because public and popular attention is really conceptually not the same as scientific and academic impact. And it might also not tell us much about research quality, but rather about the levels of attention or reach of a publication. Okay. Finally, some takeaway points. The fifth one I mentioned here is be clear in what is analyzed and measured. What does that mean? There might be different indicators and metrics that may support different areas of evaluation. We might have to differentiate between impact, 
or popularity or productivity or efficiency. Uh, so we really need to make sure what we want to measure. It's really important to normalize metrics. They need to be field normalized to be able to compare across research fields. And also there is a time dependency. Of course, a researcher who has more academic years can have um, uh, gathered more citations basically. Um, and how we define better always depends on the context. One other example of that would be that um, the Swiss National Science Foundation, for example, unveiled a new CV format to make grant evaluation fairer. So they tried to focus more on quality instead of measuring quantity in terms of citations. And takeaway point, a number needs to be interpreted and the age index is especially bad at this. So the key question is, what is the purpose of the analysis? And this is always what should be put in the beginning. I hope I could convince you about some of these takeaway points about research impact. If you are interested uh, about more information, please check the references I included uh, in this presentation or reach out to us. If you need advice on bibliometrics or scientometrics, if you need an in-depth workshop on using a particular bibliometric database, or if you have questions about meaningful bibliometric or altmetric indicators and their interpretation. You can reach us at bibliometrics at library.ech.ch. Thanks a lot for your attention. And we would like